When I was a kid, I loved science fiction movies. But I was always sad when the movie ended. Today, the movie never ends because I turned my whole life into a science fiction movie. I am making a living computer. A living computer. Let me explain. It all started in 2014, when a friend and myself decided to make a better artificial intelligence. So AI works by simulating neurons on a digital computer. And we wanted to make a more realistic simulation. We worked for five years on this. And we were successful. At the end, we indeed had a more realistic simulation. But there was a problem. And the problem was that for a few hundreds of neurons, that means less than you will find in an insect, we were using as much power as 20 washing machines. That means that if we would have scaled our simulation to the size of a human brain, we would have needed something like a small nuclear plant. But all of us in this room, we have a brain, hopefully. Each of our brain is made of 100 billion of neurons. And each of these neurons is connected with 10,000 other neurons using synapses. Extremely complex. However, our brain consumes only 20 watts of power. That means that our brain is one million times more energy efficient than its digital simulation. At the same time, we had a friend who was working at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Switzerland <laughs> on the Human Brain Project. And here, he was working with living neurons. I mean, human biological neurons. Then the idea came. Instead of trying to simulate neurons, why not use real living neurons? It sounded like pure science fiction, and I loved it. <laughs> so the first question was, how can you get a human neuron? Well, in 2012, the professor Yamanaka from the Kyoto University in Japan got the Nobel Prize for a fantastic discovery. He found a way to take some cells of your skin and turn them into stem cells. And when you have stem cells, you can create any cells of your body, including neurons. So we started to learn about cell culture and how to connect those neurons together to create so-called brain organoid. One year later, we came out with our first very own brain organoid. Basically, it's a small ball of half a millimeter of diameter that contains 10,000 neurons connected. And at this point, we ran into a major issue. Because indeed, those neurons are connected, but they are connected randomly. That means that if we send some information to such a brain organoid, it's going to reply with a random answer. What we need is a way to train those neurons. And it's interesting, because it's exactly the same problem that happened 30 years ago with artificial neurons. But there is some good news. And the good news is that we are sure we can train them. And we know this 
because you and I, we are able to learn. So the way we work on this in our lab is to use a reward. That means we are going to use new modulators like dopamine to reward the brain organoid when it does well. It's a bit similar to giving some treats to a dog when it does what you want. In May 2024, we published our result in a scientific paper. 15 days later, our company went viral. We had so many journalists contacting us, and still today, asking many questions, but two in particular. What about the ethics? And what if your brain organoid becomes conscious? But the thing is, we are scientists, but we are only scientists. So we know about neurobiology, about artificial intelligence, applied mathematics, but we have no expertise whatsoever in ethics and philosophy. So we started to connect with the academic world of philosophy, and we delivered our first speech in a philosophy conference in Amsterdam in October 2024. This was really the first step to try to integrate this new science, which is biocomputing, into our society. Because if living computers are an acceptable option, then the applications are endless. Consider, for instance, the incredible amount of energy which is used today by artificial intelligence. If we could use biocomputers to power cloud computing, we could decrease the power used by AI by thousands, actually to the point using artificial intelligence would have a negligible impact. Even Sam Altman says the current situation is not sustainable. But there are even more important applications, way more important applications. The thing is, today, I don't know which ones. But it's normal. Consider, for instance, the inventor of the solid-state transistor, Mr. Shockley, one century ago. This device enables to control current in electronic circuits. He could not guess that his invention would be used one day to create smartphones or the internet. Actually, like an investor told me recently, biocomputing is not simply a new technology. Biocomputing is a new industry. And if we can make the ethics right, what was just pure science fiction five years ago, leaving computers, may become a reality for everyone tomorrow. 